complex regional pain syndrome is a, a nervous system disorder that usually manifests itself with severe pain at a proportion to what one might expect. Now, originally, complex regional pain syndrome was thought to be a disorder in, in the extremities and where an injury would occur and then pain would be at a proportion to what that injury is. What we now understand is that this truly is a nervous system problem and that it manifests itself in the periphery as well as other places um, with quite severe symptoms at times. Very interesting new information that's been developed with regard to complex regional pain syndrome. Uh, we recently ran a symposium at the American Academy of Pain Medicine on update on complex regional pain syndrome where we uh, demonstrated some of the re recent functional MRI data as well as some of the um, recent uh, data with um, regard to uh, peripheral nerve changes with this syndrome. Now, what occurred at this symposium that was attended by several hundred pain clinicians from around the country is that a few came up to us at the end and said, gee, I didn't really realize that complex regional pain syndrome is truly a disease or truly a syndrome, that it's not just a constellation of some symptoms, but actually there are things now that unify the diagnosis. And among those are the functional MRI changes. Now, what, what is a functional MRI? Functional MRI is an image of a part of the body where not only do you see the anatomical structure, that is the physical structure itself, but then in addition to that, you see the activity in that structure. And normal people have normal functional MRI patterns. In other words, if you're looking at the functional MRI of the brain, um, of a normal person doing specific activities, there are patterns associated with those activities that are normal. Now, what we know now with the new data related to functional MRI and complex regional pain syndrome is that areas of the brain light up that have nothing to do with normal sensation that are characteristic now of this syndrome. So, for instance, there there is the limbic system, which is the system that's responsible for emotion. Uh, so we have depression, anxiety, but then we also have libido, appetite, um, ability to sleep, uh, sense of well-being, all in the limbic system. And so when you touch the area of a patient who has CRPS in the involved area, what you see is that it can light up in the limbic system. Now, when I went to medical school and when most of practicing physicians went to medical school, we learned that sensory information shows up in the brain in the contralateral somatosensory cortex. Now, what does that mean? Contralateral opposite side, somato body, sensory sensation. So that part of the brain where normal sensation is appreciated. And, and that's what we learned in medical school. We didn't learn in medical school that when you have a pain syndrome, that you touch an area and another area lights up that has truly nothing to do with sensation itself. This is the area that's responsible for suffering. And, and what's been demonstrated by several researchers around the country over the last decade is that there are distinct areas of the brain that show abnormal perfusion, that, that is abnormal blood flow in CRPS. We have the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, which is an area that's responsible for executive function, among other things, that winds up with change in perfusion. We have the limbic areas that I mentioned, in, in particular the anterior cingulate cortex, but then in addition, we see the contralateral thalamus, one of the pain processing areas, actually, once again, having changed perfusion. So instead of having just the sensory area of the brain lighting up when you touch a painful area, we're now showing that there are changes in five areas of the brain. And, and this is very important because what's, what it's showing is that there truly is a central nervous system component to this disease that now we have truly objective data to demonstrate that this is a disease, that these are findings that we can see in the disease. Now the other thing that we showed in the symposium 
it's work by Anne Louise Oaklander from Massachusetts General Hospital at Harvard. And, and what she's shown is that the small fibers, the small nerve fibers in the periphery actually have changes that you can see under a microscope. And, and this is extremely important because once again, those who think that CRPS is just a figment of some patient's imagination or doctors believing that it's there and it isn't, here we have truly objective data. Now, what's most fascinating to me about the work that Dr. Oaklander has done is that if you do a biopsy on the opposite side of the area where the patient's having pain, so for instance, if the patient is having active CRPS in the, in the back of their left hand or, or the whole dorsum of their left arm, and then you biopsy that area and you find these peripheral nerve changes, what's fascinating is if you biopsy the mirror image, those changes are already starting to occur on the other side. So what we're seeing is this systemic problem. It's not just a problem of one limb. It's not just a problem of one limb that may have spread to another limb, but it's a problem where the whole nervous system gets involved until the patient's whole economy, their whole health gets affected by this disease.